I go to drug and alcohol centers to talk about gambling. And there are three reasons I do it. Number one is what the statistics tell us. What they tell us is that 30% of all addicts and people uh, dependent on drugs or alcohol have a gambling problem, and that 50% of all gamblers have a drug or alcohol problem. Secondly, there's something called switching of addictions. We know that there are certain neurotransmitters that are involved in addiction. We know that serotonin, which is impulse control, is involved. We know that dopamine, reward and reinforcement, is involved. We know that norepinephrine, arousal, is involved. And we know that the endorphins, the natural body highs, are there. And they all take part. And brain studies today show that the brain of a crack addict looks just like the brain of somebody playing slot machines who are addicted to the slots. And so we just know that there's a switching of addictions. And third, I see gambling as a real relapse trigger for alcohol and drugs. Somebody wants to gamble. They're six months clean. Where do they go? You know, I, my area, they go to Atlantic City. What are they offered in Atlantic City? Free drinks. We know we don't want to test or tempt ourselves. That may be too tempting for someone. And what if they win? We've learned how to reward ourselves. How do we celebrate good things? Drugs and alcohol. How do we commiserate and drown our sorrows? Drugs and alcohol. So when you gamble, you have that potential to win or lose, and that's the behavior that we've learned. How we celebrate and how we sympathize over our losses. So it's a real risk factor. So what I find is that addiction is real. I was recently the chairman of the National Problem Gambling Awareness Week committee, which took place March 1st to March 7th of this year. And our slogan was real people, real recovery. I'm sorry, real addiction, real recovery. And I believe that drugs, alcohol, food, Cigarettes, sex, gambling, they are all forms of addiction. And one of the biggest barriers to getting help is the stigma that still attaches to it. That idea of going back to Nancy Reagan, just say no. We can't do that. We need help. Most, a lot of people go through natural recovery. They never go to a therapist. They never go to a 12-step program but there's a change in their life that enables them to get clean. We also want people to know that recovery does work, and I'm a perfect example. I've been through three forms of recovery, as I've stated, behavior modification, uh, intense outpatient, and 12-step. And each one works differently. And it really helps me as a counselor to match the individual with what's gonna work with him. One size does not fit all, if all you have is a hammer, everything tends to look like a nail. And the tools that we use for gambling, we have something called self-exclusion, where you can ban yourself from the racetrack for one year from the casino, from one year, five years, or lifetime. I did that for lifetime. I banned myself from racetracks for lifetime. These are tools that are used. The literature tells us that 12-step programs plus therapy is the most effective way to go. And there's certain advantages to therapy. Number one, it's a safe place. It's a place where you can feel safe. To me, my GA room, I call my sanctuary. Because I can talk about anything and everything and feel safe. It's a place where you can be matched with the right kind of therapy. Gamblers particularly have a very high rate of suicide. 20% attempt it and about 60% have thought about it. So in private therapy, is a good place to talk about it and share about it and get it out in the open. Drugs may be useful in fighting addiction. At one point, all the 12-step programs had no drugs. But I think we've grown, and I think we've learned that it can be of assistance. If someone also has a depression problem, maybe you take an antidepressant. There's also the matter of time. Therapy is time limited. It's cost limited. For me, GA is for life. I mean, people say to me, you've been going for 12 years and you haven't made a bet. Isn't it time to stop? I say there's a cause and effect there. The reason I haven't gambled is because I go to those meetings. I'm a pragmatist. It works for me. I recognize the, what I get from the GA, and that's why I continue to go. So my message is pretty simple. Help is available. 
We don't have to be slaves to our addiction. The word addiction comes from the Latin addictus, meaning held captive by. And when I was drugging, when I was gambling, I was held captive by it. It controlled my life. Gambling was my mistress. There was no room for anyone else. It became the way I defined myself. It became the way I planned my life. When I got out of, G when I celebrated 10 years, I prepared a top 10 list of the 10 benefits I've gotten from GA. I don't have that list in front of me, but I'd just like to mention a few of them that stick in my mind. Time is now a friend, not an enemy. I've begun work on character defects, which is a lifetime, a job. I now organize my life around non-gambling, where for years I did it around gambling. I've made wonderful friends in this program. Most of the people who I now associate with are in the program. I think of Shakespeare, and he talked about the tragic flaw. I always had unrealized potential. Always knew I was a bright guy, but I was a C student in high school, a C student in college, a C student in law school. When I went back to school with a clear head and a good focus and wanting to be there, I mean, my master's, I was a 3.97. Um, PhD program, I was a 3.8. I'm doing what I love doing, and I think I do it well. And that's a joy to live up to your own potential. Um, another of the benefits is just... It's become the basis for my morality and my ethics. You know, step four of GA said, make a fearless moral and financial inventory of ourselves. And financial, we understand it because we associate gambling with money. But the moral inventory is so important because I didn't have that set of values. I didn't have guidelines. I didn't have ethics. I lost it all. And I've gotten it back. And it's something I pride myself on and something I work on every day of my life. I have a value system. I know what's important to me. So recovery has been a wonderful experience. So many people who are in recovery, like myself, feel the need to help other people. People helped me along the way. And that's what step 12 is. Carry the message to other people still suffering. And that's one of the reasons why I agreed to be on this videotape today, why I wanted to talk a little bit about gambling and a little bit about addiction, and why I believe that there's help available for everyone. There are helplines throughout this country that can be helpful to you. There are help groups. The only requirement for membership in Gamblers Anonymous is a desire to stop gambling. No fees or dues. If you can give a dollar, you can. If you can't, you don't. But it's worked for me. It's turned my life around. It's given me great joy, great pleasure. I'm now happily married for two years. I have a rich, wonderful life. I have a cat who's my pride and joy. I would have never thought about associating any value to a cat. There was no room for cats in my life. We take vacations every year. We, we, we have a good life. I go to concerts and theater. I replace one addiction with another. So I go to concerts and theaters three or four times a week because that's my love. But it's a good, wealthy life. And what the important thing is, I'm free. I'm not tied down. I'm not held down by captivity to an object. To me, addiction is a relationship. It's a relationship with an object where we use it to change our mood. Someone once said, I once said to a friend of mine, what do you do when you're depressed? How do you get out of it? She said, I shop. What do you do? I said, I gamble. I've learned that that's not a good way of doing things. That there are more constructive ways to learn to change our mood. And that I don't have to turn to addiction to do it. Thanks for listening. My name is Jeff. I'm an addict. Thanks.